right, this is a mess. I can't find anything and it needs rearranging. So I started tidying up and this happened.
Right, so starting from the front, I've got some new shelving in that fits the space a lot better. Uh, I got this from a, a certain Swedish shop that we all know about. Uh, but it's just, it's easy to build, it's stable, and it's strong enough to hold all the gear that I'm going to have on it. Um, I haven't quite rearranged everything yet how I want it to be. Uh, although I have been caning the January sales a little bit. So, yeah, that box there, there'll be an unboxing and a, a demo of that coming soon. Uh, I've got a new toy from Triton. So that could be fun. So I've got some, some of my routers are drill bits, all my sanding gear. Uh, yeah. It's not scrap, I just haven't used it yet. But there's my reference library. Looking a lot neater. Bench top sander. Brilliant bit of kit. Really recommend getting one of those if you can. Uh, you can change it between belt and uh, bobbin really easily, takes seconds. It's a phenomenal machine. So that's the entertainment. Helps keep you sane. Uh, scrapers, sandpaper. All my chisels, all my foils and various cutting implements, screwdrivers, etc. Easily to hand where I need them. I've got all my stains here. Uh, yes, I am a Crimson fanboy before anyone asks because uh, it's just good gear and I like it. So I've got this rubber mat stuck down on the bench for an area where I can do staining without taking up the room on my actual bench. And I've fitted some more guitar hangers in. So I've got more space to hang guitars when I'm working on them. So that one I'm waiting to get stripped down because it's, uh, I've got the neck angle wrong on it, the brake angle. So I need to strip the hardware off it and use it on, on the next project. You know, it's all a learning curve, but hey, disappointing because it's beautiful, but these things happen. That's Adeline. That's the guitar I made when I spent a week at Crimson many years ago now. It's what started me down this rabbit hole of craziness that we're on. That's called Erasmus. That's the one I made from the timber that Alpha Woodwork sent me during the first lockdown. And it's a great guitar. I really enjoyed making that one. Poplar burl top, ebony fretboard, sapili body and neck. Really good fun. And there's my build off. Rosewood and maple. Bit decadent, but hey, it's beautiful. There's the, the good stuff. And that BC Rich, I'm um, helping a friend of mine refinish it when we finally get round to doing something again. Uh, but yeah, it's coming on. Went a bit wrong on the finishing, so we need to redo it, but we'll get there. So I've rearranged the clamps. So all my long clamps I've got there and my shorter ones for doing next bodies or whatever. I've got them up there now, so they're out of the way, but easily to hand when I need them. Hand planes and associated gubbins. Loads of templates, loads and loads of templates. Need to sort those out and organise those better. Some more guitar projects that I've had on the go for far too long. That's all guitar gubbins in those boxes. So parts, hardware, pickups, 
all that sort of stuff. And then we got more useful stuff here. So not straight edges, leveling beams, egg beater drills, which are great bits of kit. Uh, you know, all these old tools, I got them all from second hand shops and, you know, got them working again without too much effort. So you can get stuff for not much money if you can put a bit of time in to get it working. Uh, the Shinto Rasp. Probably my favourite tool out of all of these because it's just awesome. So that's all there. Easily to hand, although it'll probably all get rearranged again at some point because it needs fettling. The one thing doing this, I've actually ended up with a lot more shelf space than I had before. So I've got more places to put things which means that I can fill it with more tools, which is always good because most toys wins. Uh, that's the fuel station. Can't build guitars without tea. And then we get to the big stuff. Well, big for me, but we got a 10 inch bandsaw. That is a really good bit of kit for not much money, relatively speaking for bandsaws. So if you've got a small space, and you want a bandsaw and you can stretch to it get one of those because it is really good and it's got a cast table to it which is very useful and very good you know it's very reliable pillar drill that i've moved over by the door just because it takes up a bit less space this way and if there's any mess then it's right by the door and it's easy to clean up. So I've moved my, managed to get space by moving my bench backwards four inches or so, not even that. And I've managed to get enough room so I can move my router table more into the center, uh, which will be good. It means I can get access all the way around if I have to. I mean, admittedly, it helps that I'm um, svelte, I think, is the... Uh, you know, the polite way of putting it, I'm built for speed, not comfort. So I can fit round here. Um, so I'm quite lucky, but it, it means I can get access all the way around the table if I need to, because uh, sometimes you need to flip round and come the other way. And at some point in the near future, I've got that table saw to put up, which will be going there right in front of the door, just to make life bit easier with milling things down and you know and I can sort out a cross cut sled and all that good stuff just to make machining things a bit faster and easier but you can get an awful lot of stuff into a small space you just have to you know think about it a little bit make it be a bit more logical and keep it tidy don't let it get into a mess if you use a tool put it away Put it where you know it's going to be, so you can always find it. Don't let the mess build up. Clean as you go. And you can keep it efficient and clean. Which means you work better and faster. So, there we go. That's the new layout.